me somebody I just just like him. I don't know why you like him. I don't even know him. What why you won't like him? I'm boring. No, I can't like him now. Go. No, I can't like him. And you go and you keep liking that person. Oh, I can't be liking this person. I don't like how you do. Some ladies, that's how I do. Welcome to the Deeper Life Bible Church Singles channel. This is Princess coming to you again <laughs> as usual. And today, hey, I have two guests. <laughs> <laughs> On my right hand side, I have Faith, Hello. Moses, and I have Patience. Hello. <laughs> so, these two sisters have a lot to talk about. <laughs> a lot to talk about. Let's see. Let's make sure that everything is working fine and that we're loud enough. So, on our channel, we talk about relationship. We talk about how to know the will of God. And we talk about how to get a thriving and godly home at the end of your relationship. Of course, we advise people to go through the, 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 the leadership of your church if you're led to somebody. Or uh, if you think there's somebody you want to marry, we advise you to let your pastor know about it. And then every other process that you need to take going to the marriage committee. If you are a deeper life Bible church member, if you have another, if you go to another church, there is always a process in your church. Don't forget that. You should go through your pastor for directives on the right way to go about your marriage and eventually your Christian home. So today we're talking about will of God. <laughs> will of God. <laughs> yes. 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 And, and Patience has a lot of things to talk about. <laughs> and I think Faith has a lot of things to talk about. Patience is really <laughs> she wants to talk. So she has she has a lot on her chest that she's going to uh, share with us today. So please be patient. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share. If you're enjoying and being blessed by the content that we put on here, let your friends know about it. Somebody might benefit from this information that we're giving out here. And don't forget that we are on Facebook as Deeper Life Bible Church Singles as a page and as a group. We are also on Instagram, but we called DLBC. D as in Donald, L as in Lima, B as in Baby, C as in Charles. It's in good. DLBC singles. Please don't forget to follow, to like, to comment, and to share your views um, on these platforms. Stay with us as we get into the topic right now. Um, so yes, as I was saying about this concept of the will of God, now I need to background on myself. I grew up with Deeper Life. I grew up with Deeper Life baby. Because when I was small, I've been hearing Pastor Kumi in my ears. <laughs> I'm a Deeper Life baby. I know about this will of God. But I guess as I'm coming of age, even as a person, let's just go my age, but let's say as a young person. <laughs> yes. Um like I'm now hearing more about you know attending campus conferences, hearing more about marriage, trying to know who is the will of God for you. Mm -hmm. So even in the you know, campus conference that we just recently concluded, we had a session, we had multiple sessions, question and answer sessions, talking about finding this will of God. But leaving these sessions, you as a young person, you will just at me at least there is myself. You will be scared because there's this message that there's this will of God and it's a hit or miss. You either get this will of God or your marriage life is at risk. Your marriage life forever can be difficult and there's no divorce. So you can be in difficulty till you die. And even possibly, eternity is at risk according to the messaging. Eternity is at risk. So not only the rest of your life is going to be difficult, but your eternity is also at risk. So it's a very, it's almost like there's this fear mongering that is behind will of God. It's like you should be afraid because you can have a difficult life. 
can have a difficult uh, eternity if you don't get this will of God right. So get it right. And I thought that this is actually not a proper way to discuss this idea of the will of God. Because this, even this phrase, will of God, has become a very, I mean, obviously, will of God is, a, is just a general concept in any area of your life. You should pray about knowing God's will. But we all know, will of God is a phrase referring to finding, it's just popularly a phrase to find your marriage partner, exactly. So, it's now become this, um, like, a way to avoid failure. And I think that's not what, it should, that's, that's not what it should be about. It should not be, the, like following the will of God should not be a way to avoid failure. It now makes the will of God kind of like a a lottery thing. Oh, let me come and find the will of God so that my life will not be bad. Let me come and find the will of God so that I will not have a difficult marriage. Let me come and find the will of God so that I will not my identity will not be at risk. There is no sincere heart of worship where you and and find the will of God not as a way that I will end up having a difficult life. I mean to avoid having a difficult life. But I want to know the will of God because I want to worship God with my life. I want my heart, my life, my soul, everything to be surrendered to God, right? And I feel like it's now become a kind of um, like another method to get things right. It's self-serving. It is self-serving thing. You see people now, now asking, how do I know the will of God? In reality, if you are so, if you are a Christian, who your life is already in a place where you are postured, right, to serve God, to do His will, to you are surrendered to His purpose, right, His ultimate purpose. You should not be, you should not be asked, how do I know the will of God? You should already be someone who is connected to God, who knows how to know what God wants for your life. So it should not be a separate conversation. How do you know the will of God? How do you know the how do you, because I think there's a lot of anxiety. Even me myself, I begin to have some anxieties about it. Like, huh, is this not okay? I've gotten some maybe some signs here and there. Is that enough? Should I get more? Should I get a dream? Should I get a sign? Should I hear this? What if I heard something but I didn't get it right? What if I married this person and I found that I was wrong? Because they will now bring leaders in the church now bring stories of this person she married this one now the person is suffering that's why you should get the will of god <laughs> they bring you see hear all these stories this person i think there was one this comment they were saying that you see the husband now is now became sick and you see how the wife is treating him because he did not marry the will of god <laughs> and i'm like hey <laughs> and it's like, it's like, it's like, ah Ah, this will not, if I don't get this will of God, no. But I don't care, I don't wonder. Ah, should it be like this? Should it be a separate conversation where, how do I know the will of God? How do I know this person is the one? Should it not be that, oh, in my entire life, as someone who is, you say, I'm dead to self, I'm living for the Lord, I'm walking, I want, you know, Christ to be my life. You should already, like, have a life where it's like, Lord, Teach me your will. Not even in big decisions, in everyday things. When I have a fight with my sister, I ask God, what do I do in this moment? Because I'm, I'm getting an <laughs> you know what I mean? That's that is knowing the will of God. You know? It's like you want to, you are talking to a friend, your friend is you know saying something. You ask God, God, what should I say? That's knowing the will of God. It's just that it's a daily walk of surrender with Christ. And then knowing your spouse, it's a very big decision to make. We know that. I'm not trying to downplay it. It's a big decision. I'm not saying my fighting with your sister. It's getting to know your life partner. But should it be something that is a whole, you know, like this whole thing of like everybody, you know, become anxious about it because of this huge thing that if you don't get it right, that one time your life is over forever. It's it now becomes a very like a very scary kind of thing. And and I also don't like this idea of like presenting like all these stories of marriage and saying oh this marriage failed because they didn't get the will of god when in reality can't it okay maybe it's more of a question can't you actually marry someone who was the will of god and your marriage can still go through difficulties does that mean they did not marry the will of god yes, That's, yeah. so i think i think the question is like you just because you marry the will of god does it equate to having a perfect marriage, marriage. And, and where that kind of like um, 
when I, I started to think more about that was because recently I was listening to this pastor she's a lady and she was preaching about talking about how a year like a year into their marriage or five or six months into their marriage or so my husband cheated on her now these people are Christian this is not like unbelievers mm-hmm. and, and not, she said she prayed yeah exactly what I'm saying that they're not deeper like me but she emphasized the fact that before she decided to marry the man she asked the Lord like but this is what you want me to do and she really had God say yes like you should marry this person and so she was like when that happened she was just asking God like but it's not like I said I just went to do anything I wanted to do it's not like yeah. I said I didn't pray for the will of God mm-hmm. so why then did my husband cheat on me so it's that idea of like just because I pray for the will of God does it mean that I will have a perfect and those who have difficult marriages doesn't mean they married the wrong person isn't there other factors that come into play into somebody end up having a difficult marriage and also if someone ends up say making the wrong choice or maybe they did marry the will of God but things went through the rocks I don't believe there's any marriage that's beyond redemption because I cannot just imagine let's say I end up in a bad situation God forbid but you know let's say I end up getting married getting married maybe my marriage is going through some problem I'll not be asking myself have I made a mistake am I stuck have I married the wrong person? What will I do? I cannot get out of this. I've married the wrong person. My life is over. Isn't God's grace beyond any mistake one can make? Can God turn around any situation? And even that situation where the person cheated, the, the husband cheated. Now, you see that how God turned that situation around. And now they even use it as a testimony to encourage other people. People who are single, people who are married and similar situations. They use it to encourage others. I don't think God made the man cheat. But what I'm saying is that it's not it's not so linear as it seems. Like God can make beautiful messages out of messy marriages. Yes. You know what I mean? That's true, yes. But um I understand that feeling of people thinking that there is some fear mongering going on when they have these marriage seminars. But as I always say, the will of God is as simple as God, please, I bring my marriage to you. You know who my partner will be. You know who this man will be. You know who this woman will be. Please lead me to this person. So the will of God is God orchestrating everything for you to meet the person that he has for you. You understand? So when when you say, okay, does it happen that marriages who have gone through the will of God and they think that God really let them will be and marriages without any form of problems it's not true because there's always problems in every marriage marriage is a coming together of two imperfect people to form a couple right and they are coming from different backgrounds you are trained by parents who are maybe very lenient very nice very um can give money out and this person is trained from a family where they are very they don't give anything they are only receiving they only receive they don't know how to give they don't know the culture of giving and you both come together this man has he's not a selfish person but he has not learned the act of giving you come together he comes from a background where their family they just you know just live like that there's no decorum just everybody takes care of himself and you come from a home where everything is structured you have different personality because of your background, because of your training, because of your education, and you come together. But God can bring both of you from different backgrounds, different walks of life together according to His own way. That's what the will of God is about. Now, there are marriages where they did the will of God, and there is sickness, or there is childish, childlessness, or there are misunderstandings at the beginning of the marriage. When they're trying to understand each other, there are problems that, that come up. When they do the will of God, they are able to go back to God. See, but when I was praying, like when I was praying to know the will of God, God gave me a verse. And I hold on to that verse anytime that I think that I've come to a point where I need to really pray and tell God that Lord, please, you that directed me to this marriage. Help me through any any obstacle, any challenge that I might come through. Because I was, I would confess that I was very afraid. Because of this thought that marriage is a one-time thing, till death do you. Right? And I'm this kind of person that feels that at the beginning, before I got married, that 
what if I get bored um, and I no, not not even fall out of love, but maybe I want to go back to my friends. Maybe I maybe what if it becomes like entrapping for me? What if I want to begin to live very free, like, you know, if I feel like traveling to here, I just travel, I don't need to, you know, if I feel, what if I start feeling like, I'm, I'm tired of this person all the time, I want, I want to have some space. There are so many what ifs in the heart of every young man. And in the heart of every young man too, because apparently my husband had his own fears too. Men don't want to make a mistake. They really don't want. That's why most men, you see, ah, I was close. He didn't propose to me. You know, those people in the world, they're like, wait, when will he propose? They all, when will he propose? He has never proposed to me. I have been together for three years. And this man is ruminating and he's checking on that case. Maybe there's somebody better. Maybe the beautiful ones are not yet born. They're afraid too. So everybody's afraid of coming through this life, life being committed. I, as a woman, I felt that, okay, God, I, I don't know who you are for me. I don't know. If it's how, how it looks, where it comes from, and everything, but I believe that if you are the one that is bringing us together, it will work out. And I, I just believe that it was going to work out as long as God was bringing us together. And that was my aim. That was what I was expecting. And so I prayed, and I, I really surrendered myself to God, and I said, "Lead us, lead me in a way you don't have to." It doesn't have to be a dream, it doesn't have to be a vision, it doesn't have to be a voice. But I want you to orchestrate, arrange everything such that we will know that God was just being this. You know, sometimes you meet people and you don't just know why you should meet this person. You don't know why you should meet this person at this point in time. So God has his own way of, it must not be the same pattern for everyone, no. And that's why I tell people, don't try to get the sign of the other brother. On the sign of the other couple. No, now you your own your own is original to you. Look for that originality. Let God tell you exactly what He wants. And let Him lead you. Be flexible. Be like a worm in the hands of God. Let Him lead you. Don't be don't be some people have their own law. God, if it's not tall, no, if it's not short, if it's not slim, it doesn't, it must not have cut belly, it mustn't uh, be too dark. Some ladies say, I don't like hair men, mm, it's not, it's not masculine, it's not masculine. It's not masculine. No, 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 it has to be black, tall, dark, and handsome. What is that? <laughs> a boxing board. And even when God is showing you the black brother, you will see, because you already have a, 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 a speci- specified specification of what the man should be. And then you miss it. That's what they mean by the will of God. And people have missed God's will in marriage and they, I can tell you the truth. People have missed God's will in marriage and they not happy. Does it mean that people that didn't marry according to the will of God are not happy in their marriages? No. There are all, all believers who have happy marriages, happy homes. But the difference is that as Christians, we go back to God for any problems that we have. That's why all believers, when they have problems, they run help us get. They get help from every other place. Some of them that know other ways of getting their solution. They go, but when we go back to God, because God gave us, like God led us. It's just like I mean, you pray for God to lead you to the country you want to go to, uh, to the study you want to study. And you say every day, Lord, lead me, lead me as I go out today in everything that I do. So why can't you also pray the same prayer for marriage? Why do you think that you can fix it yourself? You can find the right man yourself, you can do it yourself. No, why do you think that? So it's it just depends on the mess, the message, and the person preaching the topic of marriage. They don't intend to scare young people, but maybe the way they, they put it and they <laughs> scare them. Okay. <laughs> because even the last conference that we had, after the woman was just speaking, and then she would be shouting it. You know, no, no, no. And I was just like, hey, do we all know? I don't know what means this will of God thing. Like, it's like, it just sounds very intimidating. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it seems no longer, like, now you're, now you, the way you're explaining it, it brings peace to my heart. Yes. The way you're saying it, because yes. you are saying that it's, it doesn't have to be, you know, the way every other person is. So, God will speak to you, you know, just in, and sometimes God thing. drops an impression in your heart. Right. You just go, you just meet this one, it's like, And it comes like a maybe you're like, oh, what's that thought? Or you just be somebody and just, oh, just like him. I don't know why you 
like him. I don't even know him. What? Why you not like him? Like for me? No, I can't like him now. Go. No, I can't like him. And you go and you keep liking that. Person. Oh, I can't be liking this guy. I can't be like how he looks. Some ladies, that's how it is. I don't even know how. I don't even like how he's like. I don't know now. But if I don't give you this, but I don't want to. Oh, no, no, no. I can't like him. But as a child of God, you know that I got my business. Start seeing succession of verses that will come into your mind. You know, and you know, you just know that God is giving. And then you have this kind of peace within you. When you say God, some of you are still praying about the Lord helping them. You just have this peace that oh, I said you do. What are you still doing? What are you searching for? Some people have that gift of God speaking to them clearly. Brother John. Some other people. They will just open the bar sometimes to comfort, comfort, and it's comfort. <laughs> sometimes they will just read peace, and it's peace. The name of the sister is peace. It's just peace, nothing more. And sometimes you just have this feeling that oh, you need to move. You just need to move. You just need to move from here to this, from Edmonton. You need to go to Toronto. From Toronto, you need to go to New Farm. And you are, they are moving you. You're just seeking for a job, and you have never found a job that you want. Mm. And you're going around in circle until you get to a city and you're like, oh, okay. I think I want to stay here. Mm-hmm. And sometimes that's how God is telling you that, okay, this is how. And it will lead you and you just find that single brother alone waiting. And there's no sister in that job. And he's like, ah, maybe no one will come. And then you just come like that. <laughs> and the brother is just happy that, ah, thank God. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's different ways that God can, God can lead you into marriage. It can be in different ways, but just be flexible in the house of God. That's just what I say to everybody. Be flexible in the house of God and be attentive. And of course, they cannot speak to you if they are not the same to you. Yeah. He can just start with, 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 with just marriage. Right? He cannot just start with marriage. It, it has to it has to start from from somewhere. God communicating to you with simple things mm-hmm. and progressively you go into where that's that part. Well, sir, let me ask you something. See, what you're, what you're saying now about, you know, knowing the speak of God. So, to what extent would you say that, um, like, okay, you should use your own understanding in deciphering if maybe you and this person are compatible. Say, for example, you see this person, maybe the culture of this person, the... Well, not if the person's like beliefs is like ungodly or anything like that, but maybe the person is not very different from you, from like a different world or something like that. Like yeah. two opposites yeah. in a situation yeah. or whatever situation where in your brain it's like it does not seem like this thing will work. Yeah. So, to what extent do you um, follow, let's say, your own? your own kind of understanding of the matter or the situation between you and that person where it's like okay i don't think this would work let me not bother or would you say just follow whatever the lord tells you don't like or whatever you said the lord tells you don't use your brain don't use your head or whatever the case yes normally the advice is that if god is leading you and you know god is leading you tell him to make everything work because sometimes some people are married they feel that they are compatible with their culture mm-hmm. is good, they're this, that they find out that they're not. They are completely un- compatibility is zero. <laughs> On the surface, yes, but when they start living together, they realize, oh no. Mm-hmm. So nobody knows. You see, what you see on the surface is not always what it is. Somebody can be nice to you outside, but when you start living with them, you know the real person. Right? That's when you really know who that person is. Now, if God did not lead you and you don't have that real love for that person, then you start having problems. My husband always say, marriage is not, it's not about feelings. It's a choice. You choose that this marriage, if I choose to marry this person and I choose to stay in this marriage, it's a choice. Because feelings don't lie. Speaking of feelings, that's another feelings question. Don't. Well, wait, that topic is long. <laughs> this video is already so long. It's for another session. It's another session because feelings <laughs> just feelings is feelings now. You feel now you are, you feel happy and all of a sudden you feel sad. It's more than it's more than just it's more than just like falling in love and like fall out of love. I'm not saying it's out here, you know, many people out here they fall in love and fall out of love. 
The girl will just say, or the boy will just say, I don't love you again. I don't love you again. And he doesn't know why he doesn't love you again. The feeling has faded, it has waned. It's gone. So marriage is now a choice. That choice that I choose, that's why I say, I do. You choose to do that, okay, I'm going to do it, and I'm going to stay here. Good, bad, ugly, nice, wealth, aura, sickness, and health. You don't pay for sickness, okay? Yes, but in every situation, you stay in that relationship because you choose to marry that person, you chose to love that person, you chose to be with that person. Till death do you part. Well, according to the Bible, too, the Bible says you have to. Once you are married, you can't jump out of it. If you jump out, then you're jumping out to stay low. <laughs> for the rest of your life you know there's no divorce God hates divorce we always say it no matter how those verses those messages are preached sorry <laughs> yeah, I'd rather do it right and get to heaven so I don't miss heaven there's no second chance when you are forced to the other side you know what I mean yeah. you read that tweet no, I have another question maybe that's a like, question but when you're talking about preferences like you know if it's not fair like you know there's this there's this Belief, or should I say, argument that goes on that about preferences that in terms of physical appearance, yes. like, of course, will I ever love someone that's not physically attractive, right? And so, like, even in terms of preferences, like, is it okay if you tell God, okay, God, I want, because for like for me personally, like, I'm praying, apart from all the, the whole thing of okay, you should fear God, you should love God. There are some certain things I want that are not necessarily spiritual, yeah. but for some of them it's physical, for some of them it's not even physical, but maybe other things I want to value, I would love you to value just because of something I would want. So is it okay to tell God like, oh, I, I don't mind the fact that you know, you know, I'm a little bit of, you know, a little bit of, you know, like, a little, like, you know, like, even if it doesn't have to be that, that <laughs> training <laughs> That shouldn't occur. Okay, it's short, so you know? <laughs> Let's make it grow, start eating more beans or something to grow taller. So, like, is it okay to, <laughs> to be. Because you have to be honest with the Lord. And I remember what Jesus said in Mark 1 11 to ask, ask anything. So, you know, wow. Like, well, you can ask if you don't have an idol, if you don't have, like, brother A. Oh, I just love him, Lord. Let it just be my way. <laughs> Let it be brother Lion or brother Moses. It just has to be brother Moses. So, I just like. <laughs> Lord, Father, if you can just allow it, you say that you ask anything. Once you have done that, you are already putting God in the box. You are telling you, oh, this is what I want. But just, just stamp it. Mm-hmm. Right? Yes. Yeah, what yeah. God will give you, as the Bible said, God gave them according to their desire. Mm-hmm. God didn't tell them again what He thought about it. But He said, God, you have to give me now. Give it to me. It's not like a child. But me, I want bread. Can I have bread? Can I just have it now? Like, can I have it right now? They're like, you know what? Just have the bread. Let me have some peace. Have the bread. Did I really give them the child the bread? Maybe I had something else on the child. Maybe I had cake. And he says bread, dry bread. Okay, dry bread. It makes you happy. Take it. Is that the perfect meal of God? That's what that's the concept of perfect meal of God. You are free to tell God, oh Lord, please. <laughs> I love her brother so don't let your will be done. I want to do your will, oh Lord. And I love you. It is fair, I like it, oh Lord. That's just my heart desire. And that's the sincerity that I want people to ex- exercise when they are in the presence of God. God sees you. What are you hiding from? Let me how you feel. You know what I really love fair brothers. It's just like you in pain and hiding from God and not saying, you know what, God, I know I, I feel fine. And you are not feeling fine. You can tell what I like fair brothers. So. <laughs> I really love me. I talk to God like my friend. <laughs> Lord, I really like fair brothers. So. Mm-hmm. Ah, but this is your will. I want to do it. I know that whatever you give me is perfect. And I'm ready to do your will. I just want to do your will. God is watching. I think we should stop. It's getting long. It's getting long. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this session of discussion on the will of God and I hope that you are blessed by this um, this discussion that we had and don't forget to, to, to share this video, put your comment below if you have your own questions, to put them and we'll, we'll try to discuss those, <laughs> those topics with you and I pray that the Lord will bless us, the Lord will keep us and that next time we'll find ourselves in, in, in good health Amen. and that God will give us an answer of peace as I always say. A, a peaceful answer so that we all have peaceful and peaceful days.
that's my desire for you. But I pray for all of you. I might not know you by names, but I pray for you that God is settled as many Christians are asking for God's will and are crossroads to fulfill your heart desires. It's a very difficult time in the life of every single. Nobody wants to miss it to marriage. But God, who is our Heavenly Father, who loves us, who wants to give us the best, the Lord will give us the best in Jesus' name. God bless you and see you next time. Thank you for sticking up with us. And uh, thank you, Faith, and thank you, Fish for coming. Thank you for having us. We hope that we'll see you again. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> oh,